Last week, I tore down a Cadillac Northstar V8. And after reading all of the comments in that video, it seems that the majority of people don't really care for the Northstar. And I, I'm not even a little bit surprised. But today, I think I've got an engine that even fewer people like. The Ford 4-liter single cam V6. This is out of a 2005 Ford Explorer. These also came in Rangers and 5 to 10 Mustang V6s. 210 horsepower. And I always hear the same thing from everyone that owns them. Oh, it just has a little chain noise. And that is usually preceded by, hey, do you want to buy an Explorer that doesn't run? That's, that's usually how that works. Now, I don't really buy vehicles with these engines. So, I mean, I've sold a few, but I, I try to stay away from them because I, I view all of these engines the same. They are ticking time bombs because the timing system leaves everything to be desired. I'm not going to pretend there are no redeeming qualities of a four liter. In a Mustang or a Ranger, I find the power level to be adequate. Not really so in an Explorer. They're pretty underpowered. And then there's, uh, help me out here. They, I don't like this engine. I'm just gonna come out and say it, not a fan. But this, I don't really have details on, so I can't tell you what's actually wrong with this engine. This was in a pile of engines, and I've also been asked to tear one of these down on the channel. So here we are, and we're gonna find out if this is actually good, or if it's just a whole bunch of broken parts. First things first, let's pull the spark plugs. Well, the plugs actually look pretty decent. They're all the same brand, which is a start, and nothing's bent, nothing's broken. They actually look good. Now, let's see if this thing turns over. Yeah, it's actually really smooth. I don't think there's anything wrong with the rotating assembly that I can tell easily. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, spray down all of this rusty stuff. Hopefully it makes it a little easier to come apart. Put some penetrator on. That's tight. I'll just go ahead and get this exhaust manifold out of the way. Since we're already tooled up, let's get the other side off. I didn't need any penetrant on this side because the valve cover gas has been leaking. They kind of do that themselves. That one's broken. Now let's pull the intake manifold off. Ha ha! Time for a ratchet. Is it loose? Probably not. Oh. Well, that's a surprise. And we've got a few things to unplug. And the intake's off. What is underneath the intake? Is this some sort of Colombian Bam Bam? What is this? Foam? I guess it's for sound? Yuck. Oh, there's some knock sensor things. Nope, that's just a ground. Nope, that's knock sensor. Well, that looks pretty rough. Well, the intake valves and intake ports look okay so far. Nothing jumping out at me yet. The other bank looks pretty good too. There's some debris in this one, probably from pulling that piece of foam out. Nothing jumping out, nothing looks terrible yet. Now, let's get this bracket out of the way. Just cleans it up a little bit. These make good engine mounting bolts. Keep those. What is hap- what? I gotta take this off? Okay. Strange. Next, I'm gonna unbolt the fuel rails. Get those out of the way. And with a little help from Blue, you should just pop out. Oh, they just leave the injectors in place? Okay. 
I see. Fuel. And we have this harness that's caught. We need to get this out of the way. Let's just spend a minute here and clean this up a bit. Well, that didn't take very long. Just gonna kind of let those injectors hang out there and we'll get the valve covers off next. Time to buzz off the valve cover. What lies behind door number one? Everything actually looks pretty decent in here. Everything's still in place. I don't see any silver sparkles. It's a little sludgy, a little dark. It still has a uh, chain guide material on the top at least. Let's go to the other side. Before we can take the valve cover off, we need to get this bracket, which is held on with two different size bolts. That's totally normal for Ford. Just kind of slide this over here. And here's the passenger side head. This side is cleaner, so it probably has to do with crankcase ventilation. And there's a couple pieces of the valve cover. This engine got knocked around quite a bit. But looking down here, I don't, I don't see anything terrible, which is surprising. But we don't know what the bottom of this looks like. But yeah, this all looks okay. If I just talked all this crap on a four liter and it ends up being good, well, that's just ironic. Next, I'm going to remove the all plastic thermostat housing. This is a Dorman unit, so this has already been replaced once. We'll just pull that off with the water pump, I suppose. Let's get the water pump pulley off. Now there's just a whole bunch of eights that hold the water pump on. Does this just come right off? Sure does. How does it look? Well, that looks like an ancient Greek painting of which subject matter I cannot talk about on the channel. I don't know if that's an original water pump, but it looks like it is. It's got a Ford number in it, Ford stamp on it. Yeah, it's a good idea to hang on to these original water pumps. Now that the valve covers are off, we can turn this over and see if we can spot any more problems. Uh, yeah, I can see a problem. Oh, uh, uh, yep. Let's, uh, let's zoom in on that. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's see what's going on here. I am not the smartest guy in the universe, but I'm pretty sure that the guys are not supposed to move like that. It's got quite a, quite a bit of slack in it. Oh yeah, that's super loose. Technical term. Let's look at it from this vantage point. It looks like the tensioner's not even doing anything. And the front quite, isn't quite as bad, but watch how much this guide moves. I feel like those tensioners are spent. Now let's get this harmonic balancer off. Oh, well, I'm not sure if this is going to work. These bolts are threaded in here. They didn't feel very good going in. So here's the original crank bolt. And there's a bolt from my bolt bins. We're just gonna thread that in a couple threads. So it's not ruining the crank. And let's put this back together. Yeah, that ought to do it. Now we can start zipping some more bolts out of this timing cover. All right, now I'm pretty certain I've got it all, except for this bolt right here. 
All right, now it's all out. So the timing system looks simple at first, but when you look further, you see you've got a primary chain, and that drives the secondary chain behind it, which has got all kinds of slop in it. And then there is something that goes through this engine and drives the rear, and I think it's this shaft here. Again, I don't do a lot of four liter stuff. I might sell a few computers for them, but that's about it. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the timing chain tensioners from the secondary chains, and we'll take a look at those, and then we'll start blasting everything apart, pull the heads, it'll be fine. So yeah, that's, that doesn't seem very strong to me. I feel like it should have a little more resistance than that. I could be wrong, but that just feels like a spring, and like there's no, no hydraulic properties to the tensioner whatsoever. Now it does look like that tensioner is fed oil pressure, so that could be why. It could just not have any pressure because it's not running. Well, let's go ahead and get the cam gear off. I need to take this out. It doesn't, it's got some junk in it, so just Ratchet that in there. And now this moves around and I don't really know how the, oh, I see how the rest of this comes out. I really need to get this off. We'll do that next. Oh, should probably take that tensioner out. That wasn't too bad. All right, now there's a 10 millimeter bolt here. And I think this whole cassette comes out. Oh, do I have to pull the cam for this, really? Really, guys? Well, maybe the chain comes out first. How does this work? There's a chain. Oh, and what a chain. Yeah. This not come through here. I don't I don't understand what I'm supposed to do here. Okay. It's just, uh, did I come off? All right, another chain. Chains everywhere. It's like a gold mine. It's a chain mine. Another piece of plastic. That rail's got some pretty heavy wear on it. Make sure we keep that. This still needs to come out. Oh, maybe, maybe this comes off. Let's try that. No, that's just this plate. That didn't help me. I mean, that did something, but it didn't help me. I still want this out. I don't know why this won't come out. I guess I need to pull the... Wait. You're telling me that to replace this, the head has to come off? What? Why? Maybe if I just... Nope. Okay. Well, we'll pull the head, I suppose. This really should come out. I don't, wait, there's no reason I'd have to pull the cylinder head to replace a piece of timing system. No way. This isn't a BMW, what the heck? Is there some magic way to, oh, there's that piece. That retaining plate. Nope, I guess we're gonna have to pull the head. Okay, we'll do that. Now I have to remove the dipstick. Yep, it's gonna be fine. You know, I know it's gonna be fine, because it turns. And it was fine, but it still has oil in it. 
Okay, all right, so dipstick's out, but I gotta drain it. First, these two front bolts. Now I am gonna pull the heads complete with the cams in them. If we find that uh, the, the bearings are rough, then I'll pull the cams out to check out the journals. Otherwise, I'd like to keep these heads complete if they're good. Well, I cleaned the bolts out, so that way I can get the most amount of contact area between the socket and the bolt. And the last thing I wanna do is strip one of these because they used Torx. Wow, those are tight. Yeah, those are, those are quite tight. I think that's everything for this head. That wasn't supposed to go there. Well, head gasket looks okay. Oh wait, no, maybe not. At first I thought I saw an imprint from a uh, valve on one of the pistons, but now I don't see it. I think I just wiped the imprint away, which that's not how that works. Now this comes out, right? Wow, that is just, not a fan, not a fan. Let's give this a quick little brake clean bath here. Let me get a better look of what's going on. I turned the engine over to show the most amount of what I would consider damage. It's really not bad. The bores look pretty decent. There's no dings in the pistons that I can see, but it must have had some water or maybe coolant sitting in this cylinder because it etched the side of the bore. Now, would that cause a problem? It's really hard to say, maybe, but I don't think that's why this engine was a core. The head itself doesn't look too bad. I don't think it swallowed any debris or anything. There's no marks on the valves. Now, it does look like this valve has got some damage, but it's actually just the buildup that's chipped away on the edge. It's not the actual valve. The rest of this looks okay. I don't see any cracks. Won't know until we wash the head though. Now we'll pull the other chain tensioner. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot of resistance, but again, that could be because it doesn't have oil pressure currently. Now we'll pull the T30 off of this. This come out. I have to pull the cam gear off first. We're gonna keep trying though. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's broke. Yeah, right there and right there. I don't think that's supposed to come out, but it came out. All right, we'll get the cam gear loose next and then we'll uh, pull the cylinder head. That right-handed thread, oopsies. Nobody told me. Yeah, the bolt's a little deformed. I think the cam's gonna be okay. All right. I think I've got enough room in here to get the two rear bolts out and then we'll get the big head bolts loose. I'm sliding this stand around. Okay. Let's just try up here first. All right, let's see if this comes right off like it should. Everything looks okay somehow. Will the head gasket come off? Looks good. There's a twig in there. Yeah, the boards look pretty nice. This bank looks pretty good too. 
No signs of moisture or water sitting in here. There's no dings in the pistons that I can easily see. Looks good. The head also looks pretty good. It is really dirty. There's a little bit of pitting on that valve there, but for the most part, this looks like a good buildable head. Of course, we won't know until it comes out of the washer, but I don't see any signs of an overheat yet. And here is where things come to a crashing halt because this bolt right here, which is inside the bell housing behind the flywheel is what holds the other side of this rail in. So you have to pull the engine to get this off. Now granted you have to pull the head off too, but why? We're going to try to get that out. My engine stand might be in the way, but we're going to try anyway. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not going to work. We're just going to take that bolt out. You know, 75%, it's fine. See, it didn't even care. There we go. Now this bolt has a rubber seal in it. I wonder if that ever leaks. And here's the other rail. Oh, that's where the other piece is supposed to attach. So no, you're not supposed to be able to pull the piece out like I did. That means that was bad. This rail also has lots of wear. Better take good care of this. So now I think this can probably, is there enough room for that? I wonder if I can walk this chain off of the, oh, there is a, looks like a freeze plug or some sort of cap. Oh, I don't know if that's going to come out at all. Yeah, I don't think that comes out that way. I think it comes, wait, which way does it come out? How does that happen? Now I'm going to try to pop this cap out. I don't know if that's going to work or not. Chain is in the way. But maybe I'd be able to, you know, just, nope, but putting dents in it. Oh, there we're moving now. This is the procedure they want you to use. Oh, there's a big old bolt in it. Huh. So to replace this rear chain, all right, let's see if we can get that out. So unfortunately, I should have done this much sooner, but there's no resistance to this. I have no idea what's gonna happen when I hit this with the impact, but we're just going to, um, oh, you know what we need? This is a safety tote situation. Yeah, that's what that is. This is either going to work or not. All right, we're going the right way. <laughs> what the heck? I don't know what just happened, but it just launched that. And it looks like the bolt's out. It's fine. It's all fine. Look at that. Chain is out. That means this shaft should come out. Oh, there's other parts to this. So what does this drive? I bet you we'll find out when we pull this apart. I've gathered all of the timing system components and I, I think I'm shy a few pieces here, but all of the plastic is here and the chains. So you can see there's three chains. This is the front of the engine. This is that piece that doesn't come off unless the head's out. And there's the jack shaft, cam gear. Here's a primary chain guide. You can see that has pretty significant wear. Now here's the tensioner for the primary chain, and that is worn pretty heavily. See how deep that's worn. And then we get to what's actually bad. And now this is supposed to be one piece, but as you can see, it's not. I bet this whole engine is condemned because of this, the whole thing. And you have to pull the engine out to replace this. It's great. See, it's kind of chewed up there too. 
Now the good news is I don't think we're going to find a bunch of plastic in the pan because usually this piece shatters and this all ends up in the pan clogging the pickup and then you've got bearing and crank damage. I'm, I got my fingers crossed that we're not going to find that. Before I turn this engine over I'd like to do two things. I'd like to remove the oil filter housing and the oil cooler and we'll drain the oil. I'm sure there's not that much oil in it, right? It might be drained. It might just be... No. No. Definitely not drained. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm glad I pay attention now. Now we can turn this thing over. That was planned. It was definitely quick. Fine. It's just fine. Now we can pull the lower pan. some stuff in there. The inside of the lower pan, it doesn't look too bad. It's got a little bit of water in there, probably rain water. There's no chunks of anything. However, once I removed the pan that showed me this, which is uh, metal, that could be part of a uh, tensioner, and then a piece of plastic, also part of the timing system. Let's look to see if we can find anything else in here. I don't see anything. I don't see anything in this part of the pickup, but wait. Another piece of plastic. Uh-oh. Sparkles. We're not supposed to find sparkles. There's sparkles in here. That's not good. Peeking around in the pickup reveals even more stuff. Now, I don't think that's enough to clog it by any stretch. Even the stuff that was in here likely wouldn't clog this. However, I will say it's got a pretty small orifice. Probably pretty easy to uh, clog that. Now we're going to pull the pan. felt something crunchy when I pulled the pan and it turns out the plastic here just disintegrated and this is actually a guide for the balance shaft. This engine has a balance shaft in it. I guess not all of them do. The rest of this looks okay in here. I don't see anything too wrong. There's no more debris or any other pieces from the timing system. It's just when I pulled the pan what I felt it came apart. This balance shaft seems to be okay but I'm not quite sure why some engines have it and some don't. Sorry guys, I lost audio there for a minute. The housing has a little bit of wear. There's a little bit of junk in there, especially on this side, a little more wear right there. You can definitely feel that with my fingernail through my glove, but for the most part, it's not too terrible. Pretty interesting oil pump design. Well, sorry I have to recap here. I lost audio, but I removed this before I pulled the oil pump off. And this is the balance shaft cassette. I'm not quite sure why some of these engines have a balance shaft and some of them don't. If they don't need it, they shouldn't be here. I, uh, I definitely wouldn't want to have a balance shaft engine in mine just because there's more plastic to fail, which this one crumbled as soon as I grabbed the oil pan and one more chain. It's just unnecessary. It's just one more point of failure. So we're gonna, we're gonna put this where it belongs. That's where it goes. Now it's time to pull the rods and pistons.
the rod bearings all look pretty good. There's a little bit of wear, but really, these are nice looking. I don't think this thing was ever starved of oil, and I also don't think I'll be pulling the cams out of the heads at this point. The pistons look pretty good, but I wanted to show you something. There's a few battle wounds on the bottom of the piston, and I think that's from the timing components, at least the metal parts that were floating around in here while this thing was churning. I don't think all of them have it. This one has a couple. It's really not bad, but I don't see any towards the center or rear of the engine. The pistons look good. There's not a lot of skirt wear. This all looks pretty nice. I don't think there's any piston to valve contact in this engine. Time to remove the crankshaft, so we'll unbolt these vein caps. I guess it's the rear main seal holding it in. Or not, it's just in. That took a little force. Now, the crank should come out pretty easily. Ooh, that's pretty heavy. The main bearings look pretty good too. Not a ton of wear. I think the short block was in pretty decent shape. And this is what drives the oil pump that just pulls right out. And the crankshaft does look good. I'm not quite sure what it's worth. Typically, most non-performance Ford crankshafts don't have a lot of value because new ones are really inexpensive. At least that's been my experience. I think it's pretty clear why these engines don't have a huge fan base. Now, I don't think it's impossible to get high mileage out of these engines. I just think that if you have and you haven't serviced it, you're on borrowed time. That's just my personal opinion of these engines. I don't hear a lot of good things from owners of these vehicles unless they just bought them or they specialize in them. And sure, just like anything else, even hot V twin turbo V8 BMW engines, if you get good at them, they become easy. Maybe not those. Those are still pretty difficult. Either way, I think this engine still ran. I think it ran okay, and it just sounded terrible. It probably had a bunch of chain rattle, and I've seen them get bad enough where they've worn a hole in the rear, valve, rear part of the valve cover from so much slack in the chain before they jump time. But usually they jump time, pistons meet valves, and it's done. And I think that's what sends most of those vehicles to the salvage yard is that component right there, that little cheap plastic. I don't know if new parts are better than the old parts or they're just new. I don't know enough about these engines. I would say that I don't, I don't have them in stock. I don't buy them for a reason. I don't buy two seven Chrysler products. I don't buy four liter Fords. There's certain things I stay away from because I think it's a gamble to sell used engines, but they do sell really well and I think you can see why. I really hope you enjoyed this teardown. If you'd like to buy anything out of this engine or anything else I've torn down, you can go to importapart.com and peruse our inventory. If you don't see what you're looking for, you can fill out our part request form, which sends us an email of exactly what it is you're looking for. As always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.